The CEO of Amazon Web Services or AWS, Matt Garman, just said, if you go forward 24 months, it's possible that most developers are not coding. The CEO of Anthropic, Dario Amade, recently declared, in three to six months, AI is writing 90% of code, then in 12 months, nearly all of it. The CEO of IBM, Arvind Krishna, predicted, AI could replace up to 30% of white collar jobs in five years. So my question for you, Neat Code, is, is software engineering dying? And is it even worth learning to code anymore? Or are we training people for jobs that are not going to exist next year? Yeah, I think it's a really important question that obviously everybody is asking right now. And there's a lot of uncertainty around it. I'm not going to pretend like I have all the answers. Uh, but I will say that a lot of the time people take these people that are in uh, positions like CEOs of big companies and they take their opinions more seriously than everybody else's. But there's a lot of contradicting opinions right now. Like the GitHub CEO is saying other things. He's saying that they're actually hiring more juniors and that actually learning to code is even more important now. And uh, so it, it's hard to think about it. But the way I think about it is we've been hearing these predictions a lot. We heard the exact same predictions, I feel, like a year ago. They said, well, wait until 12 months from now. I actually have a video <laughs> that I made 12 months ago that I was saying, hey, AI right now is not able to clone my website, Neat Code, right now. And people were saying, well, just wait six to 12 months. And now six to 12 months has passed. And to me, at least, the growth has been very substantial. Cursor and tools like that have gotten better, but it really doesn't feel exponential to me, at least. It's still making a lot of mistakes and getting it from the point of writing 10% of code to 30% of code to 90% of code, that's going to be exponentially difficult. So I'm not really sure what the basis of the Anthropic CEO's like opinion is. Obviously, he has a lot of data that most people don't. But if six to 12 months pass and we're still not at that point, is he just going to say the exact same thing? Well, okay, we'll wait six to 12 months now. It's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. They just keep saying the exact same thing to try to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it's not really happening right now. And so that's kind of how I approach it. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. Not a single person does. So uh, just kind of go by what you see. Focus on the data. Don't take anybody's opinion uh, and like overweight like a single person's opinion. Try to think about it yourself. Um, but... Uh, at the same time, for people who are learning to code, I would not be getting into it just for the money. Like you should enjoy it at least a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty difficult. Yeah, when I when I read these lines from like the Anthropic CEO, where he literally said in three to six months, AI is writing 90% of code. He could be coming from the perspective that sure, maybe AI is generating a lot of code, but it's an engineer prompting whatever AI tool to actually generate that code. Then the engineers actually reviewing all of it, fixing a bunch of mistakes, reprompting and reprompting and stuff like that. So I think a lot of people tend to catastrophize these situations where they think, okay, they hear these, they're going on LinkedIn, they're on Twitter, they're hearing these crazy lines from a bunch of CEOs, and there's like a lot of uncertainty there. So based on what you've seen, I mean, from my perspective at least, these AI tools have been, you know, exponentially increasing over the past two years. Anecdotally, based on what you've seen, based on neat code, based on like what you've read online, do you feel like a lot of like the number of entry level engineers and even mid level engineers are dropping in terms of hiring? Or do you feel like hiring is staying the same or even going up, technically speaking? Yeah, it does look like there's been a lot of like layoffs, of course. And there has been like it's a lot harder to get a job now than it was five years ago or a few years ago. And there's a lot of reasons for that, I think. Uh, and honestly, the AI improving, like, for example, a senior or mid-level engineer can, uh, they don't really need juniors as much because they can kind of prompt to get that code. And that might be a factor. I think it could be a factor to some extent, but it really doesn't seem like the biggest factor. The biggest factor I've seen is outsourcing. And surprisingly, nobody's talking about it on social media. It's not like the interesting thing to talk about, but most jobs especially from the big tech companies, like the reason they're doing layoffs is because they're just hiring those same people in India and usually paying them about like half the price. Uh, so that's the biggest thing that's going on right now. Nobody's talking about it. I don't know why, but uh, th that's how I see it. Got it. I'm just going to read off because we're talking about layoffs at this point. <laughs> I'm just going to read off some stats that I looked up before this interview. According to layoffs.fyi, over... 22,000 tech workers have been laid off already this year. 
uh, which is on track to match or surpass the 150,000 cuts that were seen in 2024 across more than 500 plus companies. Microsoft recently did a ton of layoffs and they're preparing even more. Um, Intel is planning to cut over 10,000 jobs. And at the same time, the number of US college students majoring in computer science has actually jumped nearly 40% in five years with more than 600,000 people across freshman, sophomore, junior, senior enrolled as of 2023, 2024. So with these kind of numbers where like layoffs are increasing, but also the number of people studying computer science is also going up. What are your thoughts on the job market for interns and new grads today in the world of software engineering and computer science? Yeah, it's 100%. It's more competitive. So for people who are studying right now, uh, you, you should keep that in mind that things have gotten more difficult. But I think things have gotten more difficult also from the perspective of hiring. Like if I want to hire a good junior developer, the talent pool is in many ways more diluted. I don't know where that's coming from. I think maybe the surge in CS majors is caused by uh, maybe TikTok videos, people promoting the lifestyle of software engineers. And so that's like created a lot of supply. And a lot of that supply isn't really good. They're not people who care about coding. They just want to have like a really easy life and make a lot of money. And so if you're trying to hire somebody now, you, you look at a resume and the, the resume is AI generated and it's probably pretty good and it looks identical to everybody else's. So now you have no idea who's good and who's not. And uh, th that's kind of another reason that it's hard to get your foot into the door now. You might have the skills. You might be very, very capable. And it's just hard to prove it to people because your resume just looks identical to everybody else's. So one advice I would give to people is try to do something to stand out. Try to do something that's genuinely impressive. And it's going to be hard to do that if you don't actually enjoy programming at least a little bit. You don't have to love every moment of it. Nobody does. But you should get some kind of gratification from doing it. So that's kind of how I would think about it. Yeah, my, my stance on this is that I think tech was advertised as the next big thing. And I think it is the next big thing. If you look at like the big innovations that are going to change the world over the past 200, 300 years, I feel like the AI revolution, the software revolution is kind of century definer change of the 2000s um, compared to, you know, the industrial revolution or the agricultural revolution. And I think that was there's a lot of hype around that in the 2010s, you know, after the social network movie came out, after Zuckerberg became a hit in like 2008, 2009, right? And a lot of people, I remember when I was in high school in the, in the early 2010s, were saying that this is going to be the fastest growing field ever. So you should just get fully involved. And then that there's a lot of hype around that combined with social media taking off and the visibility of like the tech workers lifestyle, you know, exponentially increased. So I feel like based on those multiple factors, a lot of people who were not interested in programming didn't from a young age, you know, were not drawn towards problem solving or anything like that. They just drew themselves to computer science because they just saw it as like an easy way to get a good paying job and just ride the wave of tech and software engineering, which is why I think like that number where the number of CS majors is, you know, doubling almost every couple of years. And to your point, you said that just because there are more people doesn't automatically mean that those people are good, right? I kind of see it as like the rise of the mediocre CS major. People who just sign that degree, just enroll in the university because they feel like it's a guaranteed way to get a job. They're only doing their class projects. They're only doing their classes. And they're under this delusion that, oh, as soon as I graduate, I'll just immediately get a six-figure job without realizing that there's so many other things that I have to do outside of just the degree and the classes. So to your point as well, you said that it's actually more difficult for employers because there's so many more CS majors. And how do you know who's good or not? And from what I've seen, as soon as someone starts to kind of master the fundamentals, so they get really good at lead code, they have a really good resume, they do a bunch of hackathons, they get a bunch of referrals. It's actually not that hard for that person who's very capable and qualified to get a job in tech, based on what I've seen anecdotally. Now, of course, when you look at all the stats, there's so many people when you go on Reddit, r slash CS majors, everyone's like shit posting on there and complaining because there's so many more mediocre CS majors. So my question here is, what do you think the difference between the mediocre CS major is and kind of that Giga Chad CS major who ends up getting five fang level offers? What do you think makes the difference there? Yeah, I think uh, there's a few things. And so I guess to before I answer that, I'll say that when, when people are looking for a job, what they're ultimately trying to do is like deal with that uncertainty of it because it's a very like probabilistic process where it's just kind of random and people just want to have control over that process and they don't know what to do. So the things that I've seen that the the people who are getting a ton of internships through college 
and a lot of and like offers for new grad and stuff like that. They one, they typically enjoy programming to some extent, like they might not love it like every moment of it, but they enjoy it enough to create side projects, to explore new technologies and to actually like care about their craft, to actually like take pride in what they do. They're not just going through the motions like, OK, I'm going to go through school, I'm going to get a job and then I'm just going to work. They're not going through the motions like they actually care about their career, their career progression. They want to be good at what they do. And second is they spend a lot of time like networking. And I think that's the biggest thing right now. That's the single biggest thing that I probably could have improved upon when I was younger is just getting being around people. And again, it's hard to do that unless you actually enjoy doing it. Uh, enjoy like talking about tech and stuff like that, but join communities like online showcase the things that you're doing. If you feel like you're creating an impressive project or something, a tool that solves some kind of problem, showcase it online, try to get in front of people, try to uh, meet people who have similar interests as you do. Try to, uh, you know, talk to your classmates, see if they can help you. That's something surprisingly a lot of people don't do. They have like a hundred people in their class and they just don't talk to them. And uh, it's just one of the easiest things to do, especially like if you just join a club or something um, like getting involved and being proactive with your life. And a lot of this stuff is probably things that you've probably heard before. And so if you haven't followed this advice, you have to ask yourself, why is it because it's hard to do? Is it because you just really don't want to do it because you were just expecting to get a job and you thought it was going to be easy? Because let me tell you, once you actually get that job, it's not going to be trivial. I mean, you want to be a software engineer. And you th if you think just, you know, cheating through everything, cheating through college, cheating through your interview, cheating on your resume, and then getting a job, and you're going to be set up for success that way. I'm sorry to tell you, that's just not going to happen. You're probably going to get that job. And then you're probably going to lose that job pretty quickly if you don't actually have the skills and you haven't actually put in the work. So that's what I would try to do. Try to get control over the process. Focus on the things that you can actually do, because there are quite a lot of things you can do. It's still a difficult process, and I know it can take a toll like emotionally on a lot of people, but uh, you kind of have to make the decision for yourself like based on where you are in your life and what you want. Listen up, if you're struggling to land an amazing software engineer internship or full-time job, and if you've submitted dozens of applications and you feel like nothing is working, or you just feel like you don't understand the process, I actually run a school for people who want to land great software engineering jobs called the Software Engineering Accelerator. And over the past year, we've helped dozens of students land incredible jobs and internships at companies like Capital One, Amazon, Google, LinkedIn, Adobe, MongoDB, and the list goes on. And the best part about our program is that we actually guarantee the outcome. So if you don't get the internship or full-time job you want, you don't pay. So if you're interested in working directly with me to land an incredible job in tech, absolutely guaranteed. Check out the link in the description and submit an application to join us.